the hidden truth about camouflage for hunting. See what I did there? Camouflage. Hidden. Okay, it sounded better in my head, but we're talking about camouflage today. And the reason we're talking about camouflage today is because of a question I got in Facebook Messenger from Harrison Bonham about camouflage. And specifically, he asked me for a recommendation on what camouflage that be functional and keep him hidden from ducks and goats and mule deer in particular. And Harrison also mentioned he's 24 and he didn't want to break the bank. So he's looking for less expensive options. And personally, I just thought that showed a lot of wisdom on his part that he would ask before he went out and spent a ton of money on camouflage versus doing like I usually do and going out and spending the money first and then asking the questions. So yeah, I, I thought that was just showed a lot of wisdom there. And I realized he'd hit on something that we really needed to talk about because I didn't have a simple answer for him. And that's because camouflage hunting clothes has gotten complicated, really complicated. So we're going to try our best to simplify it today. And we're going to get down to the basics on camouflage and what actually matters. Now, before we go getting deep into the details of hunting clothes and camouflage and what matters and what doesn't and all that good stuff, and we're going to get into that. We need to start by just talking about marketing because marketing is at work here and so many of us have fallen for it. And it's not just in hunting clothes, it's absolutely everything now. No matter what we do, marketing has got us convinced we need special clothes to go do it. You're going to the gym. Oh, you need special clothes to go to the gym because you're exercising and that's somehow different than work. So you can't wear work clothes. You have to wear special gym exercising clothes. Oh, you're going walking. Oh, you got to have different special clothes for walking because you got to have the special magic walking shoes. You're going hiking, mm, no, you got to have entirely different special clothes and shoes for hiking because that's somehow different than regular walking. You're going hunting, ooh, you got to have the really special clothes for hunting, the clothes that cost a lot. And hunting clothes, I don't know how many of y'all have priced, you know, the, the high-end camouflage lately, but you can spend a thousand bucks like that if you want to on so yeah, it's marketing at work here. And it, the way they get us is they play on our insecurities and our just not knowing. So with everything I just said, if you're not wearing the special clothes, you're that guy. Yeah. And nobody wants to be that guy. And I don't even know who that guy is or why I'm using air quotes. I'm on air quotes today, but none of us want to be that guy. And if you don't wear the special magic and visibility camouflage hunting clothes, you're that guy. And everybody knows it because they, they can look at you and you ain't dressed just like they are. None of us want to be that person. So we think well, we have to go buy that you know, expensive camouflage so we can go do that sport to go with our other clothes for all everything else we do. But anyway, here's the thing. You don't need camouflage to go hunting. It don't help you. N not even a little bit. Nah, -uh. you don't need it. It's, it's the camouflage part, the visibility part of clothing, the, or the keeping you invisible part of clothing. You don't need it. It's irrelevant. It has nothing to do with killing deer, game animals, whatever. It's marketing, and we just all fell for it. And I know right now, after I said that, a lot of you are looking sideways at, at your screen right now going, yeah, we know who that guy is now. That's Tom River. <laughs> How could he say such a thing? <laughs> hey, I might be that guy. But anyway, it doesn't change the fact you don't need camouflage. And once we've been brainwashed on something and we've swallowed that whole notion and we've spent our money, we don't want to hear nobody say that there's nothing to that, it don't matter. Well, we're not going to believe it unless we're shown proof. So guess what? I'm going to show y'all proof right now. 
And we're going to get the expert opinion on this, and we're going to get the only opinion that matters when it comes to hunting clothes and camouflage and visibility and all that good stuff. That's the game animal. In this case, the deer. All right, so here's a clip right here of me hunting last Tuesday morning. You notice I'm not wearing camouflage? Yeah, I'm that guy. <laughs> okay, I'm not wearing a stitch of camouflage there. Unless you count my blaze orange hat that's got some black in it. Yeah, I ain't wearing it right now. But. So I'm in the wide open. Complete wide open on a road bed, not a piece of cover around me. I'm sitting on a stool. I got a camera on a tripod sitting right in front of me. And watch this. This, this is the first deer that stepped out in front of me. And you know, just, she looks at me and she sees me. She, know, she sees me, she knows I'm there. Okay, now that, that was my hand going in the camera where I set the gun up there to get a better look at her and I knocked it off. But anyway, I could have taken that doe easily. She never figured out what I was and she walked off and another doe behind her came right behind her and that, they went on about their merry way. She never figured out what it was, but she saw me. Well, that's because I was in the complete wide open. They were going to see me. Okay, now I can hear a lot of you now. Oh, what? And that was at 100 yards. So I can hear a lot of you now, that's a long ways off, and you can get away with how you dress for that, but if they come out close, you better have some camouflage or they're going to see you. Okay, how about 30 yards? Is, that, is 30 yards close enough? All right, well, here's a spike at 30 yards. Notice he's coming in from my right. He steps out in the road bed, and he sees me. I'm, again, I, he's gonna see me. I'm standing out like a sore thumb there. Just a big blob in the middle of the road and not a stitch of cover around me. He knows something's up. He never figured out what I was. And the reason I know they didn't figure out what I was is because they didn't go running screaming for their life through the woods. Our bowling brother. Okay, uh, I can hear a lot of you bow hunters now. So, yeah, that's 30 yards, but you know, us bow hunters, sometimes we have to get even closer. So you, you just have to wear camouflage really good, top of the line, the best you can get camouflage for bow hunting. Okay, is seven yards close enough for y'all? All right, my main camera died at this point, but if you look just to my right on the other side of the road, right where I'm sitting, you can see movement. All right, that's a doe. And she sees me out of the corner of her eye before she hits the road and she's startled and she turns around and she runs back. She ran back two steps and then she stopped and then she realized that there's nothing to be startled about. And if you look here in this clip, she walked down her and another doe that's with her and then both of them stepped out about five yards further down the road and just went on about their merry way. Okay, it, she was at seven yards when she seen me. And I'm on the ground in the complete wide open sitting on a stool with a camera and a tripod not wearing a stitch of camouflage and she never figured out what it was. And keep in mind that these aren't corn feeder pets in my backyard. That was on heavily pressured public hunting land during hunting season. All right, so let's talk about exactly what's going on there. And as far as the visibility part, I think we just settled that you don't have to have camouflage even at seven yards on the ground and completely wide open. All right, but there are a lot of things we do need to talk about there. If there's one thing I want all of y'all to get from this video, is this technology does not make us good hunters. The camo doesn't make us good hunters, the guns, the you know, GPS's and game cameras and all that good stuff. What makes us good hunters is just knowing what you're doing and that's why I was able to get away with sitting there in the complete wide open not wearing a stitch of camouflage. I knew what I was doing. 
All right, so let's go through that right now so that all of y'all understand. A lot of you already do. All right, if you don't want game to just completely freak out and go, you know, screaming, running for their lives through the woods, you got to make sure they don't recognize you as a human. And to do that, all you have to do is break up your outline. That's it. And I kind of lied just then. I said I wasn't wearing a stitch of camouflage. Actually, I was plaid shirt and plaid is the pattern okay so you you can have a lot of different materials that are plaid and for you scots those of you in the uk i, I know technically that's wrong but i don't want to get into tartans and here in the u.s plaid and tartans are synonymous okay and this particular shirt the pattern's plaid but the material is flannel so it's a really soft cotton I could have a wool shirt that was plaid. And plaid originally meant wool, but that's what I didn't want to get into. Anyway, plaid is the original camouflage and it breaks up our outline. These geometric shapes break up our outline. Look at a copperhead on, on the, you know, in the forest on the leaves and you, hard to see. It's the geometric shape of the diamonds on the snakes. All right, so geometric shapes break up our outline as long as your outline's broken up they're not whatever game's not going to recognize you as, as a human what gets us is when we move okay they see all these different pieces and my pants were different color i was wearing khakis and i got this you know all this going on with the geometric shapes on top and hat and they don't know what that is but when we move they recognize us like that. And deer have very limited color vision. Most of you already know that. That's why we can wear orange in the woods. But having limited color vision, what that does, that's not a handicap for deer. That makes them much better at seeing movement than us. Or most of us. Uh, a good many people are colorblind, almost exclusively men, but not entirely. Well, people that are colorblind also tend to see movement much better than those of us that see color. So that's deer's number one defense besides their nose is movement. I didn't move. And even with those deer, if we go back and look at this clip here, this little spike, we can clearly see him coming in before he ever gets to the roadbed because he's moving. We also see movement better. Well, once we move, Okay, deer, let's say a deer sees my hand. He makes that out. Okay, well, what's that? He don't know. If I'm not moving, that's fine. He's not connecting this to the arm, to my torso, to my legs, my head. He hadn't put all that together yet. As soon as I, all of it moves, my whole body, he puts it together like that, and we do the same. And in this particular instance, if you'll notice, I'm set up facing one direction. And I've talked before about the dilemma when you're on a road or somewhere where you can see, you know, both ways or, you know, a lot of different directions. It, for me, it's always been a dilemma. Do I set up facing one direction or do I set up, you know, watching both ways down the road bed? And there's advantages to both. If I'm in a road and I'm in the middle and I can see a long ways this way and a long ways that way, I can cover a lot of ground. The downside to that is I'm moving. All right. In this instance, I didn't have to think about it. I knew I was in the complete wide open there and I couldn't move. And I knew I was going to need to see those deer before they got out. And the way you do that is you set up facing one direction and you don't ever look any other way. All right, well, you can see them moving before they ever come out in the road, so you see them before they see you because they're the ones moving, not you. If you're looking both ways, all right, you, you've got a 50-50 shot of seeing the deer before he sees you because you're only watching each way half the time. Yeah, you're looking this way three seconds, you're looking this way a couple seconds, but at the end of the day, you watch this direction half the time you watch this direction half the time so you you got a 50 50 shot of seeing the deer before it sees you and with 
in my case, five deer that morning. That's not good odds. One of them was going to bust me and probably would have been the first one, depending on how long I looked to my left. So I set up in a way that I wouldn't have to move and that I could see the deer before they came out. And I also set up with my rifle ready to go. All I had to do was bam. I didn't have to move my entire body. I didn't have to adjust myself to shoot. All right, this is it. That's all I had to do. Once you understand that, then, okay, you, you can think about your setup. And it's not about your camouflage. Again, I could have been wearing any camouflage, and they, every deer out there would have still seen me because I stood out and I was in the complete wide open there. All right. A really good camouflage would have broke up my outline just like this did and kept them from recognizing me as a human. Wouldn't have stopped them from seeing something there. And any movement in that really good camouflage, it's, it's the exact same thing. As soon as my entire body moves, they're all, they put it together. That's a human run for your life. All right, that's any game animal. Now, yeah, there are certain game animals like birds that see color really well, and you might not want to wear this. Ducks. That, ducks can see color. You can still wear plaid or whatever with ducks. Just wear natural colors. Just don't move. Okay, now, how do we cover up our movement? Well, we put physical objects between us and whatever game, like a blind. And I could have easily pulled a branch out there and stuck weeds in it. And, and those deer would have never even seen me then. They, they wouldn't have even paid me a bit of attention. I just didn't think I needed to in that situation. And I, I didn't. None of them spooked. And I know I could have pulled a limb out there and put branches in it and it never would have seen me because when I went back, I did. I, I was with Joey's son, Ethan, who ended up shooting a deer from that spot. All right, when we did that, none of them ever saw us. Okay, so it, if you can, you bow hunters. When y'all got to draw back, you, you're moving your whole body. Y'all need something between you and the deer. Y'all need a, a blind. Y'all need, you know, brush there or something. Or get up a tree. That's why we hunt from tree stands so much. And not just any tree. We want something behind us that's going to break up our outline. Again, that helps keep the animals from making, figuring out what we are. Because if I'm a person just standing up and just, you know, sky behind me, this, my whole shape just stands out like that, and they put it together. Oh, that's a human. Run. And this is for all animals. All right, so you bow hunters have to be especially careful, and it's not to camouflage. It's to making sure that you can somehow cover up your movement. You know, go to draw back when they're behind the tree, or have brush in front of you between you and the animals, something. It's not the camouflage. Now, with all that said, I do wear camouflage. I just not happen to have not been wearing camouflage then. And when I read Harrison's message, that's when it kind of clicked. I had to laugh. I, I just finished hunting when I read his message, and that's what I was wearing, basically, except for the orange hat. And that's when I thought, yeah, we really do need to talk about this on the video. But I do wear camouflage, and I've worn it in past videos. Okay, with hunting clothes, there's the camouflage visibility aspect of it, but then there's the actual hunting clothes themselves. There's a lot of features in hunting clothes that we do want that do help us, that are, that are very useful, but the clothes just happen to be camouflaged. And the, the camouflage part's not bad. It does break up our outline, and it keeps us from having to think about that. They've... They've done the thinking for us, and that's part of the value we get from camouflaged hunting clothes. They've done the thinking for us. It's just there's no magic patterns or anything. We still have to know certain things. All right, so let's talk about the features that we want from our hunting clothes. Rather than talk about hunting clothes just in general, I'm going to talk about the clothes I wear and what I look for. And we all have personal tastes and preferences here. 
But almost all of us are aware of layering our clothes now. And that's another thing that the clothing manufacturers, hunting clothes, that they do for us as far as taking a lot of the thinking out is they design a lot of their clothes with layering in mind. So that, spending a lot of money on hunting clothes is not a bad thing. It's just not necessary. And if you if you can afford it and you choose to spend the money on them, hey, that's great. I mean, they've done a lot of the thinking for us to make it easiest. We're paying for convenience when we buy expensive hunting clothes. And they're generally quality material too, but they're just not a necessity. And that's all I really wanted to point out. In the first part there is it's not a necessity. All right. Now, with the individual pieces and layering, I don't have my thermals out here, but I've got a base layer that's a medium weight base layer. Take your pick. They're all good. Just get synthetic material, make sure it wicks moisture away. Pretty much it. Okay, pants. And on that base layer, I'm not going to wear them unless it's getting below 40. And if it's going to stay cold all day, if it's you know, 38 that morning and it's going to warm up to 65, I'm probably not wearing them. But we all have to figure out when we need to break those out. Individual preference. Hunting pants. Sometimes I wear these, sometimes I wear khakis. I should have worn these the other day, honestly, when I was hunting last week. And I paid, literally, I paid the price with a pound of flesh by not wearing these. If you look in this clip, these are, those are the bites on my legs right now. We have these things called chiggers. Some people call them red bugs. I don't know how widespread they are, but everybody in the South knows what they are, and they will tear you up. They tore me up. I like hunting pants to have a drawstring at the bottom of the leg so that you can pull it too tight and then wear these inside your boots, and that helps keep out chiggers and ticks. I didn't wear it. I had my khakis on. I didn't think I was going to go into thick brush. I ended up going in there having to get a doe out and I got ate up. I also got tore up with briars. My khakis were pretty thin. It was warm. I should have wore these. Usually I do. And essentially all these are, yeah, these are camouflage, but these are essentially just BDUs, military BDUs, battle dress uniforms. And I want to thank Lee, a good friend of the channel, for reminding me of military surplus clothes. That's one of the best values out there. If you want good pants, that's it's hard to beat those. They're, they're made extremely well. And again, these are just copies of BDUs. They've got the, the double knees, which is good. It helps them hold up. And in the case of these, you, you can see where the briars and brambles have, you know, started shredding these. So that's why that double knee is really good. Tougher, good material. You want to look for good material in your pants. The camouflage part, again, that's irrelevant. That just, these happen to be camouflage. It's all the other features I'm looking for. Now let's talk about shirts. And I always think of shirts in terms of two shirts. I, I want to... An undershirt, or just a regular shirt, t-shirt, it doesn't matter. A lot of you have seen my Henleys before. I wear this in almost every video. I just got them in different colors. I like these because they don't have a collar. And if you've ever done anything where you've got stuff flying or in thick brush, sawdust, metal chips from machining, thick brush and twigs and stuff falling down, a collar just acts like a funnel. And it funnels all that whatever into your shirt. And I found out a long time ago, I don't want a collar when I'm doing whatever. So that's why I really like these shirts. A regular t-shirt works just as good. I just like that these open up a little bit in the summertime. It tends to get hot here. And these are also generally made out of really good material. They hold up well. Now, usually when I'm hunting, it's usually cool, not always. It warms up and I'll shed my long sleeve shirt. But also by this not having a collar, I can put a long sleeve shirt on over it, which does have a collar and it works out really well. 
I don't have a, an extra collar in the way. And for my long sleeve shirt, I don't really care. I love my plaids, obviously. Um, if I'm in really thick stuff, I mentioned this is flannel, so it's a soft cotton. If I'm in briars and brambles, and this can get torn pretty quick and all that. I'll go with a little denser material, a little tougher material. That way I don't have to worry about it getting torn. But it's, it's whatever you want to wear for a shirt. Now, if it's going to be starting to get cold, you know, we're down in the 40s. Sometimes I'll just wear a green fleece over this, over my long sleeve shirts, back to layers. Or if it's going to be a little bit chillier, inclement weather, that type of stuff, I just get a regular hunting coat jacket, and I like a hood on it. So that's when I'm going to break out this. It's got some insulation in it. And hood to help keep me dry and you know help with the wind too and that's that's where a hood really helps you is with the wind and it, it's camouflage but that's the last thing I'm worried about it just so happens is really good hunting coats are camouflage and that's okay it's the camouflage that it's not hurting me and if I'm in really really thick stuff depending on where you live how you hunt I would probably want a Carhartt. Yes, yeah, not patterns, but that's okay. It's, it works. Um, again, don't move. It'll be fine. That material's a lot heavier material. It's going to hold up even better in the really, really thick, you know, briars and brambles and so forth. All right, when it's really cold, I mean really cold, I'm breaking out the parka. It's insulated parka, it's waterproof, and I'm also pulling out the bibs. This particular material here, it, this is almost like a raincoat. It's pretty much plastic. This is just an advanced plastic raincoat. It's a little softer, it's a little quieter than, say, a raincoat. You know, a little technology in the material. I wouldn't want to wear this through briars and brambles, so this would get shredded to little bitty pieces really quick. I would just have to keep in mind, or do keep in mind when I'm hunting, don't go through a briar patch wearing this. The plus side to this material though, and everything's a trade-off, but the plus side to this material is it does a great job of blocking the wind and repelling water. That's why I have this. It, it's going to be pretty miserable and cold out if I break this out. I'm more worried about blocking wind, rain, snow, whatever. If you're in a place where, you know, the type of hunting you're doing is just really thick, get you a pair of Carhartt bibs to go with the Carhartt coat, something that's really going to hold up. And then all the rabbit hunters and a lot of the bird hunters that really go into briars and brambles and so forth, they'll get briar proof, briar proof pants, something that's you know, really going to hold up in that. I think we covered it on hunting clothes and camouflage, or at least my view of it, for whatever that's worth. And This is part of why I couldn't just answer your question, Harrison, with the simple answer I'm recommending a brand because I don't really use a brand. I just look at what I need and then I go get it. And then think about, okay, is this gonna break up my outline? And again, for you, I'd recommend you go to your local Army Navy store, get a pair of BDUs for your pants. And I started to do that. I actually, I went to our local Army Navy store. I was gonna pick up some BDUs to replace these because they were torn, but our local Army Navy store had closed. I guess they couldn't get surplus stuff anymore after our government just gave away all our surplus and non-surplus stuff to the enemy. Anyway, I'm not even going there, but your local Army Navy store, you get the pants, you, you can get the shirt too if you want it, um, whatever camouflage pattern you need, and then for everything else, just you know, get you a good coat, whatever you need, whatever brand. Um, 
I did pay a lot for my parka and bibs. I got these from Midway. I've been happy with them. They've done good. But this is the last thing anybody needs. This is just for those extreme, miserable days. I'm not going to use these often. And with all of your clothes, they're generally going to last a long time. So in your case, Harrison, you're 24. You're already thinking ahead of most of us. And eventually you're going to have a few dollars. Go get you some nice camouflage one day if you want to. It, it'll last forever, and that's why I didn't mind spending what I spent on these. I'll still be wearing these 10, 20 years from now. I mean, good clothes last, and that's why we get hunting clothes. Just The camouflage part just isn't near as important as we make it out to be. All right. God bless, and y'all have a good night.